first things first, guys, watch this. Eight seconds. Unstable currents coming off cooldown before the 10 second duration has even finished. There's no tricks going on here. There's no cooldown reduction on the Nightmare Sigil. There is just the pure, unadulterated, powerful perfection that is the Patch 1.03 Best Sorcerer Build. Let's do this. Hello then and welcome, my fellow pickers of, let's be honest, the most fun class. I have wanted to long achieve the goal of unstable currents without a cooldown, just full stop. I got very close with my Ice Blades variant, but that sacrificed the extra ball lightning damage. Now, thanks to patch 1.03, thanks to a certain buffed aspect, we can do something very special. The frequency at which you can be in unstable currents is absolutely absurd. It has never been higher, and you will very frequently be just chain pressing it back to back to back as you teleport obliterate through nightmare dungeons way above your level as you remain an unkillable barriered god. Well, unless, I don't know, four shock towers spawn on top of you and one shot you out of nowhere. <laughs> But hey, I shouldn't be surprised, being one shot out of nowhere is a class feature for Sorcerer with our broken elemental resistance, right? But I digress! In the general sense, when you're not, you know, super pushing Nightmare Dungeons, this absolutely destroys in the sweetest and most satisfying of ways. Our clash taken to its ultimate conclusion, at least with what we currently have available, and I cannot wait to properly go over this with you guys. It just sings, and the song is beautiful. Starting with the skill tree, as always then, we want, of course, a maximum Arclash as the main engine for this build, taking it all the way to glinting to start the cooldown reduction rolling. The Firebolt, just one point to get the enchantment, so all our enemies are a burning for all of that sweet, flaming synergy that is so powerful and so required. Then we just say no to the entire core section and move on to getting our mandatory four defensives to stay alive and to keep barrier synergy rolling. Flame shield all the way to shimmering for the emergency button, then we get teleport all the way to shimmering again for consistent rolling potent damage reduction. We get simply just one rank of ice armor so we can press the button, get that extra bump of survivability and again more barrier synergy, then our source of vulnerability leading to our real hard-hitting numbers in Frost Nova, enhanced to use it as much as possible, and mystical for said vulnerability. We get elemental attunement, so we can lucky hit reset the cooldowns of all of these, as the more often we can press them, the better in every single way for the build. Glass Cannon 2 for a bit of free bonus damage, as we do not struggle to stay alive in our clash, it is especially tanky for a Sorcerer build. Then we head on down, grab more lucky hit to fuel all of our lucky hit synergy, and then align the elements simply to get to protection so that we do get the barrier for pressing all of our cooldowns. Barriers obviously keep us alive, but again, they activate barrier synergy that we'll get to with the legendary aspects. Three in Conjuration Mastery, so that when we are churning out lightning spears by the dozen during unstable currents, we get this awesome stacking damage increase that you can really feel. Then, to the mastery side of things, that ever-present, always looming, so good but so needed devouring blaze. And we will be using the immobilized 
extra potent version of it too, so that is very, very nice. We get Ball Lightning as our second enchantment slot, so we can summon them on top of enemies with all of our crits that's happening constantly, and the main reason we're doing this is because of Wizards, as it is our crackling energy generator. Well, alongside Static Discharge, which will be helping out and making sure we are always full of crackling energy. Then we get our ultimate that really is your god mode button, which is why we want to be pressing it constantly, and then the attack speed is massive, and then the uh, extra crackling energy constant pulses the entire way, just by itself reduces the cooldown so heavily in combination with the key passive we'll grab. But before then, get your causing currents for extra crit, it's just a big potent damage bump, and then electrocution for a big potent survivability bump. And yes, as I said, overflowing energy is the key passive, so that all of our crackling energy pulses reduce the cooldown of unstable currents, and indeed teleport, which definitely is worth remembering too, as you'll be teleporting constantly, and given Raiment of the Infinite is a mandatory bit of gear for every sorcerer build worth its salt, constant stacking, stunning, blowing up of enemies, that's always a good thing to be able to spam it. That is essentially that then, the skill tree taken care of, tied up neatly in a bow. I want to take a moment now to talk about the patch itself and how it's affected this build. Well, Charged Bolt's got a little bit of a damage buff, which is nice as we throw them out during unstable currents, so them hitting harder is good. And then Crackling Energy itself got a damage bump by 5%, which is really nice as, I'll be honest, Crackling Energy was almost good enough to be worth pushing as a build, and certainly worth leaning into a bit because it was actually contributing a surprising amount of damage when you have it constantly rolling. And now it's even better. But the most significant of all is the 10% buff to the following aspect. Abundant energy. Crackling energy has a 40% chance to chain to an additional enemy. This seems innocent enough, and you may be like, why would you use this over a pure damage aspect? Well, the thing is, this is what unlocks the door to infinite unstable currents with no cooldown, and it is magnificent. So to give you a proper demonstration then of the crackling energy damage, let's just use it to purely kill these three random enemies. Now obviously it's not going to disintegrate them, but it is going to do a very good job at finishing them off fairly quickly just by itself. Just to really hammer home this point then, if I group vulnerable and then start crackling energy these guys, look how quickly crackling energy by itself annihilated that little group of elites there. So that's what I'm kind of talking about. When you take into consideration, it can obviously crit and be affected by vulnerable and stuff. Crackling energy really starts to pack a wallop. I want to show you something very, very eye-opening. So Unstable Currents has a 10 second duration. I'm going to press it, and when it ends, I want you to look at what the cooldown left is on it. 40 seconds to begin with. Here we go. So we start crackling around, damaging these guys as they chase me. It's still on, it's still on, and Unstable Currents has finally run out. And we have 17 seconds left on the cooldown. Which means during the 10 second duration, the cooldown actually went down by 23 seconds. And that is because of the combination between this abundant energy aspect and our key passive overflowing energy. So to be more specific, when we strike an enemy, we reduce the cooldown by 0.1 seconds. With a 40 second cooldown, that means we'd have to strike an enemy 400 times. But if 40% of the time we get a second enemy, that essentially translates to your cooldowns are reduced by 0.14 seconds. A 40% increase, meaning instead of 400 hits, it actually would only need to hit an average of 285 times to reduce the cooldown fully, which is a 30% faster increase. 
So, the easiest TLDR way to look at this is that this aspect, in combination with overflowing energy, is a 30% cooldown reduction to unstable currents. Which, as you can imagine, is ridiculously good. And it's what lets us constantly have it available to use as we blast through dungeons or really anything that you're doing. So, two legendary aspects then. Oh, what have we got in each slot? Uh, on your weapon, and you do want to make sure that you have wand and focus for maximum attack speed and the lucky hit and cooldown reduction, you want extra vulnerable damage while you have a barrier. On your offhand, you want extra damage to stunned enemies, the retribution uh, aspect. Then on your rings, you want basic skills attack speed, as the more arc lashes per second, the infinitely better, and also extra pure damage while you have a barrier up, as we have a barrier up constantly. Of course, on our amulet, we want control for that massive amp to frozen, stunned, and immobilized enemies. We will be doing all three, and for each one, it's an extra 51%, and there's just nothing more potent than this. On your helm, you want a Frost Blitz, so you can have double Frost and Overcharge for extra vulnerability uptime, and for an extra cooldown to press for more barriers, it really makes Frost Nova consistently available. Unique-wise, the only one, as always, Raiment of the Infinite, for that group teleport up, it is required, it is what lets you do essentially every endgame sorcerer build, so yeah, I really hope uh, that you get one soon if you do don't. The gloves, we have the crackling energy chain, as we've been over, really key now, and on your legs, you uh, want to have the extra armor gain from Disobedience, the single best defensive aspect, and it helps as best as it can to mitigate our squishiness. Also, on your legs, you can get crackling energy damage, which is really good, and you can get ball lightning ranks for the enchantment slot, which is also pretty good as a note. Finally, then, on our legs, you have Flame Shield, Binding Embers, and this is where our Immobilize comes from. You group everyone on top of you, hit the Flame Shield, they're now stacked, stunned, immobilized, and taking monstrous amounts of damage from Aspect of Control and the Devouring Blaze passive that is now doing its Immobilize bonus. And then on your boots, you do want to get as many ranks of defensive skills as possible, ideally Teleport and Frost Nova, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with the roll of these. That all sorted out then, our actual enchantment slots, as I said, the Firebolt for the Burning Synergy, the Paragon Burning Board and Devouring Blaze, and then yes, the Ball Lightning to keep constantly summoning them everywhere, adding a fair good bit of damage, but most importantly giving you constant uh, crackling energy to power the cooldown reduction engine. Gems-wise, we want crit damage to vulnerable in our weapons, we want pure armor in our jewelry, and we we want uh, health rubies in our armor. The main reason we don't use Topaz is because uh, Teleport in Arclash essentially has no cooldown, so we can always break out of CC very easily, and the extra max health means larger barriers, which is obviously very, very good unto itself. Stats-wise, Affix is what you're actually looking for then. The priority order goes thusly. Cooldown reduction at the top. This is by far and away the best thing you can get. Get it on everywhere that can roll it. Then you want attack speed, either general or with basic skills. Following that, you want ranks of devouring blaze and ranks of defensive skills. Then you want crit chance. Then you want lucky hit chance. Then you want crit damage, either with a lightning or just generally. And then after that, vulnerable damage into close damage general damage increases like them, and then you will be very much good to go. As far as general breakpoints that you are looking for, when it comes to a crit, you want to at least be above 30% as your base crit chance, and you want your vulnerable damage to at least be over 100. As much attack speed as possible, you can't really have too much of this, it's very hard to get hold of. Then when 
we head down here. Your lucky hit chance in this build isn't too important in terms of raw pumping it because you've got quite high lucky hit bases with what we're doing, but you do want at least about 40%. Then the big one is cooldown reduction, where again, you want at least 40%. Essentially, once unstable currents is on a 40 second cooldown or less, you are good to go. So, when it comes to actually playing it, I mean, you know how to play our clash at this point, especially if you're watching this most likely, but it's very simple. You teleport onto a group of enemies, start our clashing them away, and wait for them to die. Or if you're feeling really adventurous, teleport, frost nova, flame shield, and then our clash them until they all die. It really is that straightforward. Ice armor is if things are getting a little bit rocky, and other than that, you just need to decide when to pop unstable current and with how much cooldown reduction we have baked in here Well, you can just pop it all of the time and enjoy the absolute madness that is having this on You just do not die with it and you kill everything in seconds Paragon board then is our final port of call for a perfect post-patch R-Clash. Follow my path as uh, is normal, and our first glyph is going to be extra vulnerable damage to vulnerable enemies. We'll be hitting vulnerable enemies constantly with our Frost Nova spam, and this amps up quickly. Head up, and then we get our Burning Instinct board in order to get all of our flaming synergies. Grab the rare node cluster over here to get Kindling 2 for that big amp, as well as down here, the reduction, then the extra increase, and in this cliff slot, we want Territorial for a little bit more survivability, and the increased damage at close, where we constantly are. Get it activated with the decks, and then leave up and left to the vulnerable Frigid Fate board. We want to head across here, go down there, grab this cluster for the big boost to vulnerable damage, and then go over to your glyph, and this one needs to be tactician, so that it is boosting this specific weakness node as high as it can go. I cannot stress enough how the more vulnerable damage you can get, how exponentially better this build, and let's be honest, most builds in the game do end up. You will need to level 2 this glyph to get enough decks to activate the extra bonus of essentially a permanent 10% damage increase, because we will always be pressing defensive skills. Then you want to go down and get uh, the static surge board. Veer off to the right, have it in this orientation to grab the big uh, bump to stunned enemy damage, and uh, then head down for the glyph slot. This one is control for the extra damage to uh, CC'd enemies. We're freezing, we're stunning, and this is always being applied. Get the decks when you can. I currently don't have have enough spare points because they're more needed elsewhere, but this will be the next thing I get with my next two points. Head down here too and get the extra damage to stunned enemies, which is really, really nice, but so is the extra damage to elites, which you feel too. Then we go for what truly is the cherry on top of this entire setup, and that is the Ceaseless Conduit Bard. You want to orientate it like this and make a beeline for the Legendary Node. This will turn your crackling energy into crackling nukes. A big, almost double damage increase to every pulse that is now chaining because of the aspect, but most importantly, one quarter of the time a charge will not be consumed. This is what lets you, along with how much you're generating, essentially permanently have crackling energy pulsing the entire dungeon, or just constantly with whatever you're doing, which naturally fuels massively the cooldown reduction key passive we have. Once you have got this, you will head down here, getting the extra damage to elites, and then head over to get the glyph slot. In this glyph slot, we want to put the Flame Feeder for the extra damage to burning enemies, as of course all our enemies are always burning. 
for your final board then, once you have done that and uh, got the crackling energy damage nodes as you will feel them, we head straight down and get uh, the next board, which will be uh, the enchantment master board, strictly for the plus percent non-physical damage, as that's the last kind of little increase that we can apply here. In that board, once you get to the glyph slot, you want to put the charged glyph for even more crackling energy damage as we are constantly pulsing with it and more importantly a 15% extra multiplicative increase that will always be up because we are picking up crackling energy essentially every step we take in our dungeon clears. And that will uh, kind of bring you to the end of your Paragon journey. So, that all said then, I hope you have found this very much useful, I hope you have found it inspiring as you evolve your own Arclash builds, and I hope if you do use this, you will, well, have fun with it. I mean, I'd be surprised if you don't, because it is ludicrously powerful, and having unstable currents essentially all of the time is such an enjoyable way to play Sorcerer. This really is such a peak powerful version of one of the two main endgame best options for this class, and I am definitely, in my heart, Team Arclash over Team Ice Spikes, Ice Shards, Blizzard, even though I do admit that that side of things is arguably as good and definitely fun in its own right. So, with that all done, said, and finished, it is time to, well, finish. Like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Let me know what you thought of this whole endeavor. Consider supporting the future of this channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.